The last time we saw my Melty Brain, it had a gear system in it and it just did not translate very well at all. Today, I'm hoping we can fix that by going back to YOLO Drive. For those that don't know, YOLO Drive is literally just slapping a wheel on the outside of a brushless motor and calling it a day. Normally you have to run very large, very low KV motors to do this, and I have these gold motors that I've been running on my YOLO Drive Melties for quite a while and they have done very well. This particular build, or the last build, I was trying to get the robot thinner and so decided to do away with those, which I thought meant I needed a new gear system. However, the Melty Brain is tall enough I can actually get away with using those motors, so that's what we're doing today. If you've seen me build the other Melty Brains, this build starts exactly the same as those, with some CNC cut HDPE pieces that all jigsaw lock together. This is done so that I can use some very small wood screws to hold everything in place, and a lot of the mechanics are actually held together by the interlocking mechanism, and there's not as much pressure put on the small wood screws we're going to put into the chassis a little little bit later on. But of course we need to actually be able to put those wood screws in so to do that I tape the whole robot together and then take it over to my drill press and drill an absolute ton of holes in it. I do this in my drill press to try and make sure that all of the bolt holes are straight up and down or as close to perpendicular as I can possibly get them with my current tools and equipment. This just means that it's a little bit easier to do the whole robot up later and screws don't go in at weird angles. Once I've got all the holes cut, it's time to start adding in all of the electronics. The two big ones here are the drive motors themselves, and so obviously we attach these to the side walls first, because it's very important that they actually go on. Also, once the walls are installed, it is hard to actually get to the bolts behind the motors. This is a slight flaw in this design, it would be nice to be able to access those bolts without pulling the entire robot to pieces every single time, but there are just compromises that need to be made in every design, and that is one of them in this one. And as I've done a million times before, we also Loctite these motors in because we really, really don't want these vibrating loose halfway through a fight and just ejecting themselves from the robot. The final thing to add to the walls is the switch. This also needs to be locked in. However, the bolts for this are a little bit easier to access, at least until we put the big steel teeth on the robot much, much later. With those in, the final electronics piece that actually gets mounted rigidly to the chassis is the brain board and accelerometer. This is only mounted rigidly so that the accelerometer is in a known location. In my previous versions of the Melty Brain that didn't rely on an accelerometer, this was not locked down at all. But in this case, it gets locked down with three M3 bolts, one of which gets a nylock and the other two are nylon bolts themselves, just to kind of keep the weight down and also try and avoid shorting any of the electronic components in all of the circuit boards on the actual brain itself. With that, all the electronics get connected and packed into the top and we do a quick wheels up test just to make sure that the wheels are spinning the right way and that when it melties, the wheels are actually going to turn the robot around instead of driving in a straight line forwards or backwards. Just doing a quick sanity check to make sure everything's okay. You can notice there's only two screws in the top plate here. That's because it's just basically tacked and held in place so that if something does go wrong and the robot does fall, it's not gonna spew electronics into spinning motors and potentially like wrap up and destroy a wire or a LiPo or something along those lines. With that, the wheels go on the robot and then it's basically just time to mount up the weapon teeth and then you have a completed robot. And so there we go, we have one built Melty Brain back on the Yolo Drive system with nicer little wheels on it, which should just make this whole thing work. And then we get to talking about the fights that happened at the June meet. But unfortunately, this conversation is very, very short lived. Uh, while I do have quite a number of fights, we are not going to be watching all of them because unfortunately uh, the issue that I was talking about with the Melty Brain not being able to translate 
wasn't actually a result of the gears. Apparently, it is something in this code. I first found this out when I did my safety checks. I could not translate during the safety checks. And then this trend continued in every single fight. I could spin up totally fine, and then as soon as I tried to push the stick to move the robot around, the heading lights that tell me when a motor is speeding up and slowing down just basically turned on all the time. And in the fight footage I have, you can see the kind of multicolored light like parading itself around the robot, which seems to suggest that it was trying to do that, but then something inside the robot was changing or inside the code was changing, and it was basically keeping the motor rotations on, which meant that it just sat there and spun on the spot, which is not good. That is not what a melty brain should do. However, that is one of two problems that we really faced in this particular set of fights, because the other problem I had was repeated brownouts. And we're looking at these brownouts now. Often it was during a hit or while spinning up, the robot would suddenly turn on the red LED, which means that the system had lost connection to the transmitter. And I actually think what had happened there is that there had been a momentary brownout where the five volt regulator powering the Teensy that is inside here had dropped below five volts, killing the Teensy inside and then making it reset when the voltage come back, which meant that the Teensy had to go through all of its setup procedures again, including binding the transmitter and resetting the drive motors and things, which meant that the robot spun back down and did nothing until I actually wiggled the sticks, got the ESCs reconfigured, and then I could drive away again, which is bad in the middle of a fight. You do not want to see that. Uh, obviously, we also had this in some hits, so I think it is a voltage brownout issue. I've had this issue before, and I thought it was due to the reset switch on the Melty, or on the Teensy, but I have taken that off now, and I've super glued over it so that it cannot be activated by anything that, like, floating around inside the robot that is conductive, so it is definitely, definitely, definitely not that. It must be a brownout issue. I do have some better backs than the one that I've got in here, so I'm hoping that putting in a better back is going to help that problem. So those are our two big issues. One, the code is not working at all anymore, which is really weird because I'm pretty sure I had this code working in a different robot and yet it has just broken, apparently, and to this brownout issue, which we should be able to fix with that back problem. Now, there are two other minor issues here. One of them is in the fight against Doom Croissant. Doom Croissant did manage to hit the robot and flick it upside down, and at the moment, that's no good, because when that happens, the wheels don't touch the ground, because these six bolts that are holding on the weapon teeth are just ever so slightly too long. If I cut them down with like a Dremel or something. The robot will touch the ground in this position and we'll be able to spin upside down as well. We won't have a heading light, but that's something to deal with later on. Uh, but at least we'll be able to drive upside down and keep spinning upside down, which is useful for sure. Finally, also in these fights, at one point in time, during one of the hits, I think against this drum spinner, I think it was this particular hit here, one of the motors gave up, and it gave up in a spectacular fashion. It sucked all of its wires inside itself from inside the robot into the actual motor itself, pushing the can out, breaking off the circlip on the back, and just stuffing all of those wires right in where they were not supposed to be. This did mean that for the rest of the event, I basically didn't have that motor or it would refuse to run because as the Melty got up to speed, the can would separate from the actual windings and therefore the whole motor would lose power, which is not good. This also actually bent the internal wall. I think because that internal wall is only very short and there's a lot of bolt holes in through there and clearance holes to allow wires to go through and things, there's just not a lot of material. So that needs to be reinforced and so do the motor cans as well. I think I just probably need to put a bolt through the entire motor so I'm not relying on a tiny little circlip to hold the force of the entire uh, wheel coming off. Editing Ben here, I really should have actually looked at the motor before I filmed that last little bit. It, it broke in an exceptional way. The coils 
disconnected from the middle of the motor and jammed themselves into the can as it rotated, destroying the tops of the windings, which basically meant that, yeah, it was dead, dead for basically all the fights after this point. But on the day, and all the way up until editing this video, I did not realize quite how dead that motor was. It's, I've, I've never seen a motor do that, and I'm definitely gonna have to battle harden against it. Anyway, that is going to be the end of this particular video. Uh, the Melty did not work as well as I wanted it to, but I can see a clear path to fixing it. So I've just got to sit down and do all of that work now. I hope you have enjoyed this one, and I will see you in the next video.